Hi there, this is a Parker 660 Weekend. It's a 2016 model, but it's packed with features. So we're gonna do a full walkthrough tour on this boat right here, right now, so stay tuned. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. I'm Jonathan Parker from Parker Adams Boat Sales, and we're here today at Cabin Boat Yards on a very dewy morning. Now, Cabin Boat Yards on the River Hamble, and if you just look behind, actually, you can see the Hamble Bridge behind us. So what you'll find from there on, you won't see any yachts. So we're, there's only one, two, three more marinas up on the River Hamble, um, but there's two more bridges. There's a railway bridge and then the motorway bridge. Um, but we're about halfway up the River Hamble here, but there's a whole other area to explore up the upper reaches of the Hamble, which you can only get to on smaller boats. And this is a great example of a very versatile uh, small boat. It's 6.6 metres long, this boat, but it's absolutely packed with everything you could get in even a bigger boat. But just everything's on a smaller scale, so I really like this. Um, all, what we'll start with is, if you just have a look, it's a... It's based on a Fisher, so it's a Fisher design, wheelhouse design, so it has the forward facing windscreen. So it has seagoing capabilities, but it is a small boat. It's a small lightish boat, uh, but it is capable um, for, to actually go miles and miles to go and find your fishing grounds. But this does have fishing capability as well. It's kind of a mix of leisure and fishing. So I would like to say this is more of a sports utility boat rather than a fishing boat because of the features and the way it's designed but we'll talk you through it and um, first thing i want to show you actually which is again look at the i can just climb over is it's actually got a windlass so in here there's an electric windlass so you can operate it from here very neat it's a mix of chain but obviously painted as well so it's marked for the length and, and then rope as well um, I'll, we'll confirm the amount in the um, in the details of the boat um, exactly how much is in there uh, obviously you've got an open rail at the front and then the side rails um, but what i do it's all non-slip around here as well but it's actually got this roof rack on which is a brilliant addition so when you go to the sports utility side paddle boards canoes even bikes you can get a bike rack on here and you could take bikes away with you really good addition to a small boat it just makes use of this massive roof area um, it's got quite a good navigation on here. What it doesn't have is radar, but this is prepared for radar. It has a radar mount on the top, and you can just chuck the radar on there and it will connect with the current navigation system. So if you wanted to add radar, you can do that very easily. But as you can see, it's got quite a nice walk around as well. And obviously the high grab rails make it very easy to get in and out. And then you can step down, straight down into the cockpit area. But as you can see, he's gone for the option of the full camper covers all the way around. So this again goes more to the leisure side because this gives you another very social area under cover from the sunshine. And it is warm today, it's very dewy. Oh, hello. How are we doing? I've got no food for you today. Oh, we've got a spectator today. Um, but you can see there's actually got seating in here as well and an outside table. Um, also though, they've added this outboard mount and then you can pop the fuel in here. <laughs> Thank you. I've got nothing for you. Um, the fuel tank's a 170 litre fuel tank. It's got a Mercury 150 on the back. It's done 180 hours, circa 180 hours, so quite low hours. 2016 model, so about eight years old now. 180 hours is very low. Um, and this will, um, this will probably give you a three to four hour range at a good high cruising speed. Um, but also if you're pooling around, you could be out all day. So if you're fishing, you're out all day, very, very small usage on this. Um, you've got the extended bathing um, platform on the back, either side. And then obviously you'll have a ladder on that side as well to be able to get yourself up and then through into the cockpit area. A very neat seating design because as this lifts up, this actual section, you can remove the seat base. You just lift this up and this section goes up on a gas strut and then it allows the engine to come all the way up. Um, but of course, very easy to then put it back into your seating mode. You can pop that in, it gives you the full bench seat. Um, these are also removable. 
So if you want better access, and of course the seat bases are removable as well. So this seat base you can take out with the whole base. So then you've got a full access. And you can do the same the other side. So again, this is probably a little bit in the way, but it's not on that side. Um, so very, very easy to move and then put back in. So it sort of shows its sort of versatility, this boat. As we go around, I'll show you all these points. Um, the frame itself, you can, un, um, you can unhinge. So you can move it backwards if you wish to. Um, but all these camper covers will just roll up like this or drop down. Or of course, if you want it open, so if you want to go back into the fishing side, you can take the covers all the way off. Um, and then you don't need to, then you've got all the open space to be able to, um, whatever you do with your fishing rods. Um, but it's not the only seating. So as you come in, you can see you've got the, the table, very neat with these cup holders. I like the fact they've got the cup holder covers. So it allows you to have a flat surface completely. Um, but we've got these very neat seats. Again, that pop out. And that happens either side, either side. And so now you've actually got a very sociable seating area. So you can have a nice drink, quite like that. There is a quite a large light out the back here. And we've got these, obviously, these um, um, safety boys and a throw line as well. So we've got the horseshoe boys, a throw line. And in fact, the owner um, was going to do some skippering on this. So he actually fitted this out to be coded, but he never actually did it. So he's never actually got that far. But it has the equipment on board. So if you, if you wanted to do any um, commercial operation with this, it is being designed in that way. Um, let me show you. So the Parker 660 can be specified with a sort of bait wells and things like that. So you've got the two compartments either side, but this doesn't have them. So again, getting away from the fishing side, but it just gives you access to the seacock, which is for the holding tank for the toilet. So yes, this even has a toilet in it, which we'll show you in a minute. And it has a holding tank here for it. Um, I think it's uh, um, about a 50 litre holding tank. It has about a 50 litre water tank as well. Um, and I say 170 litres of fuel. This boat weighs without the engine about 1,250 kilos dry. The engines on this one is about 450. Um, so we're talking about 1,800 kilos, say, dry. So add bits and pieces and everything like that. You may be talking around two tonnes of weight on this boat. So add a trailer. So actually towing wise, it's well under the towing limit. So again, you can transport this boat anywhere you wish in the country. Um, the other side is actually access to is access to your batteries and your trim tab motor. Um, this has auto trim tabs as well. It's actually got a little electronic box in there, so the trim tabs are automatic. And again, on a single engine small boat, um, you would normally be adjusting the trim tabs quite a lot just to keep it tracking, especially in crosswinds and things like that. But this sorts it all out for you. So again, quite, um, quite easy. I haven't opened this one yet. This is just an access hole. Yeah, there's nothing significant in there, but I suspect you could store a couple of bits in there. Water fill here. Um, and then there is a manual bilge pump here as well. The two handles for it, incidentally, are in this little cubby here. Um, there's also the waste for pump out is in here. So you can get it sucked, the holding tank sucked out as well as you can pump it out. And actually the handle, yeah, it's actually a manual pump for the um, holding tank as well, which you may have seen in there. And of course we've got a wash down connection as well. So we can wash down um, the decks as well from that point inside here. Um, you may have noticed that there is actually um, vents. So this has diesel heating. So you've got a vent down there and a vent here, which doubles as a cockpit area vent, and that's the intake. Um, but it works as a, as a cockpit one. So again, when you're all enclosed um, in the winter, then you can make this nice and warm. Very unusual for a small 6.6 .6 meter boat to have this. Under here is, um, I had it already had it unlocked. Is access to actually the diesel tank for the heating. So you just top it up here. Lose, uses very little diesel, so you probably won't have to do that once you've filled it up for the first time. Um, and the fuel tanks under here, 
with the fuel filter and again you've got extra storage um, for anything you'd wish to go into there God, that's quite a lot already isn't it and we're only just we haven't got inside the boat yet uh, i do like this door because it is a double it's a double one there we go so it's not only a small opening so it's you get a full so you can just access quickly like that we can open it all the way up no it's pretty obvious but i like to i like that rather than just a door because it's much narrower and this now becomes part of the outside area as well uh, as you come in though um, on this side this seat just moves forward if you move the control lever forward actually then you can get a bit more um, and you've got a small sink so it's just cold water on here but a very useful sink for rinsing stuff bit of storage and we also have a paraffin heater uh, very simple to use you literally lift it up fill this base up with paraffin and slot it in lock it off pop it down and then as you open this it opens the way so the vapors come up you can light them um, and then you can just boil your kettle and things like that again offshore inshore wherever you want to do there's no restriction on that with the table forward and um, it has this bit that drops down to keep that up so it's very neat um, and you can see also if you look up here there is actually 240 power so when you are plugged in this is a mains hookup so when you are plugged in you can have mains power in here and also access to the fusion stereo so the fusion stereo you've got speakers um, in here did i put any outside you don't really need them outside because you're literally um the speakers here and here so it's not as if you're not going to hear it um so you've got the speakers here and then this can drop down underneath you've got a fridge so a neat opening fridge where it does have a small freezing compartment as well and then you come in and you can see that um, it actually has an inside seating area as well, uh, which also is quite generous. Quite like this table. I don't know if it's a Parker table, but it's certainly been added in and is very nice. And you can put it either way. Uh, but as you can see, there are cushions sort of down the side here. And that's because there's an infill for here. So there's a double cushion and the double cushion is the board as well so you can just drop this table right the way down and then put that in there and then this is an additional bed very useful and then what you tend to find is there's storage under here there is storage under here access to battery switches is just under the table and then there's some trips as well and there's a 12 volt socket and in here is your shore power drips. Also storage under here as well and access to ancillaries in there. And there's also under that step, there's a little sort of cubby that you can get to. Um, and then obviously we get to the helm position. Um, is this twistable? It's, non, it's a non-twisting seat, so you can't turn it, but it doesn't matter too much. Um, but as you sit here, um, you can now get to grips with the navigation. It's actually good visibility. So all the way around, I can see, I can see all the way to the back, I can see to the side, and I can see to the stern. Um, and we have a Lawrence HDS nine inch screen. So this not only has obviously the chart plotter you can see, um, it has quite a nice, um, so it's got sonar, but also quite a nice sort of real vision type I'm, I'm used to ray marine so i don't know lawrence too much but it has a real vision sort of down so almost like sideways view so you can actually see what's going to the side as well as below so the views left and right at the moment let's come let's go back into that uh, so you can change the palette so you can change the color of it um, you can also change the view so you can just go down go right only left only left and right so you can it's a real you can really move it around wherever you want and um, you can have info on here uh, so if you wanted to you've got um, speed over ground time you can change this to different dashboard levels if you wish 
Um, it doesn't it'll run the engines. It's not connected to the engines, but it does have that capability because you have RPM and engine data on here. If you wished, you'd have to connect it in, but you don't really need to do that because you've got your engine dials here. And there are two of them. Um, so you've got one for your revs and one for your speed. And also this is a fuel computer. And then this shows you different engine information. So you can get different things like um, um, how much fuel you've been using, maintenance, um, tells you if there's any problems. So again, fuel level on here, but as well as you've got a fuel gauge here. Um, this one will do different things with fuel wise as well. So there are little menus on there you can flick through on either one. Um, temperature I can get up on there, trim, power trim, voltage, things like that. Um, the, um, the automatic Bennett trim tabs are here, and then you've got the control for the engines. Um, it's not fly by wire, it's a cable controlled one, it's a mechanical one, um, but again, it's a nice system, it's a nice unit, quite easy to use. Uh, and then you've got your Spatia diesel heater control, and then underneath, on a 6.6 .6 meter, you really see it we've got a bow thruster so i really it's uh, pretty cool um and and of course we've done a single engine the only problem you tend to have with a small boat this size which is quite tall is windage so when you are maneuvering when you are coming in and out of berth especially if you're trying to reverse windage is your biggest enemy and with a bow thruster it actually makes this process almost easy compared to a pain um, if you don't have a bow thruster uh, Carlson switch is here. You can control the anchor from up here as well. So even though you've got the remote to there, you can also do it here. And then you've got other switches for lighting and such like. There's another trip switch here for the anchor. You don't really need to see it. And then there's another 12 volt socket underneath here as well. Um, and what you can do, which you may have noticed when we first came in, this seat back flips. So now you've actually got probably two a tight two, three, four forward facing traveling seats when you're going along. So comfortable with passengers. So if, you, if the weather does turn um, and you want to shut the doors and get people in, you can do that. But of course, with those camper covers, you can just drop them down and then you've got seating for more people. This is actually rated for seven people for traveling. So you can get seven on here comfortably. Um, so quite a nice, again, versatile. It's still hard to believe it's only 6.6 .6 meters long. Just remember that. It's two and a half meters wide. And then, I'll take my shoes off. And then there is actually, as you can see, there is another bed down here. Um, I am six foot tall, as you may know. And believe it or not, I can, I'll put these down. I can not lay down. That's me completely straight. And I've still got a couple, well, I've still got that, three, three inches. So again, adult. This has another trick though. If you want a bit more room, this slides out like that. And then I've got a little extra that goes there. So now this is the inner fault for the, for the other thing, for the bed up there. But if I was to move that, you can actually see now, you could get two adults down here. So you can have two adults down here, you can have one up there, or you could, because of the width of that, you could have two kids up there. So now you can actually have four people sleep on here. It will be a bit of a squeeze, but it can actually do it. And there's an opening hatch here. So again, if you're feeling a little claustrophobic, um, this sort of mitigates that because you can have that open. This is open as well, so it's not as if you're enclosing yourself off. And it is actually a nice space. So I'd sleep down here quite happily. It's good, isn't it? Thank you, Nick. Right, let's get this cushion out of the way because the last thing I want to show you is, of course, it has a bijou. Oh, hang on. I just found the downside. You've got to come out first and then open. And then we have a small but perfectly formed toilet. Hang on, just caught, just caught me, just caught me belt on the on the door handle. There you go. But like clearly, I'm six foot tall, and the door is clearly only up to my nipples. <laughs> All right, so so you're not going to be doing too much in here apart from sitting down. 
Um, so actually, I'm going to sit down, right? I don't normally do this because it looks a bit odd, but I can actually sit down. So ladies, it's a usable toilet. And men, yeah, men, but you know what men normally end up doing. Um, and then there's a sink here as well. This does pull out, so it's a pull out into a shower. Um, and there's a ventilation, and of course you've got your light toilet roll, so it is a usable toilet. Um, the manual flush, um, but what do you expect on a 6.6 .6 metre boat? You don't even expect a toilet. So to have something like this on there with a holding tank, it's actually quite a special little boat. Um, reasonable price as well, under 50k for a boat like this, with all this versatility, and for the age is very, very difficult to find. So this is a brilliant little boat, even got a very large sunroof, side windows. So on a warm day, you can open it all up and you can make it nice and cool as well. So all in all, this is a brilliant small Parker 660 weekend, 2016. Come and see it if you want to see more details at parker-adams.co.uk. But for now, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. But I'm going to say goodbye and see you on the next video because I'm going to enjoy the sunshine, I think, now. Um, so see you soon. Bye-bye.